All right, uh, everyone, welcome to the Thursday, August 18th, 2022, 6 o'clock p.m. edition of the Auburn Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Robert Tatro. I'm the chair, and I'm going to call the meeting to order now. So, again, I already mentioned if you have any electronic devices or anything like that, please go ahead and lower those for me. Um, I have some administrative paperwork to push through first. I will do my best to get it done as quickly and as efficiently as possible so we can move on to the hearings. Um, so I have to read the script first. So Zoning Board of Appeals participation script. Uh, this open meeting of the Town of Auburn Zoning Board of Appeals is being operated as a hybrid format under Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022. The public can join the meeting remotely by telephone at 1-646-749-3112 and access code 944-571-349. Or join by computer by visiting globalgotomeeting.com. In the upper right corner, there will be a join prompt and you can put in 944-571-349 and you can join um, from a, a remote uh, meeting area. Um, Governor Baker signed a law, Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, which extends certain status enacted due to COVID-19. This statute states that public bodies may continue to hold remote meetings through March 21st, 2023. The prior law extended remote meetings until April 1st, 2022. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the body are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As a preliminary matter, again, my name is Robert Tedro. I am the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Permit to confirm all members are uh, present and the uh, people on the agenda are here. Um, members, when I call your name, please respond to the affirmative. Vice Chair Marin. Present. Richard Cussie. Present. Mr. Ciccolo. Present. Uh, and just for the record, we will not have Ms. Roach or Ms. Bush in attendance tonight. Uh, so therefore, uh, I'll go over this again when, uh, for each hearing, but um, you will require a full vote of the board in affirmative in order to get your um, applications passed tonight. So if somebody is not comfortable with that, you can certainly ask for an extension. Um, so town officials, um, we have Mr. Caleb Moody. Here. Mr. Keith Hesselton. Present. Hey, is there anyone else from the town side? Hearing none, seeing none. Please note that each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Um, and this is also being recorded for Auburn Cable Television. It will be replayed as needed. If there are any applicants participating remotely, um, could you please state your name and address as if you were attending in person? So it, it, I will ask for if there's any public comments or any other uh, about our comments. And at that time, if you are actually calling in, you can introduce yourself and we'll allow you to speak as well. Okay, so I think I have all of the administrative responsibilities out of the way for now. So the 6 o'clock p.m. applicant, Michael Chomsey, requesting a special permit under section 9.3.12 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for an accessory apartment located at 58 Adela Street, Map 4, Parcel 20. This is a continuation from the 721 meeting. So technically this hearing still remains open from then. So I don't have to ask the board if we can remove, uh, continue with the hearing. Um, is the applicant present or his representative? Um, sir, if you could approach the lectern and bring us up to date on what's going on with the situation, please. Um, so I'm Adam Chomsey, Michael Chomsey's son. Uh, my father recently just passed. Um, Very sorry to hear that, sir. We've been here, uh, but the house, um, I'm already on the deed prior so uh, i still um gonna follow through okay um i was building it regardless i was paying for it you know what i mean so i'm not gonna stop uh the process you know sure understood absolutely um i think um have you made i think with the last meeting there was a discussion about any change to plans or any right i give yep Okay, I wasn't sure where you were at with that, and I was only asking to be cautious of, uh, you know, respect for the situation. Yep. So if you want to go ahead then um, and explain to the board where you're at with things, and then I'll leave it to them, and we can have any um, of our So I believe we had 1,100 and something square feet originally, and now we, I, we dropped it back down to 780 livable. You just want to go over the plan, what changed, what you did? So basically, it basically, looks like you scaled down. Yeah, the bedroom was going to be over here. Now we just made that all storage. We put the bedroom over there, and then obviously this was going to be all in the living room. But now we have to put bedroom. So, okay. Thank you very much. So, about okay. That. Um, do we have any of Butters present that would like to speak on this open hearing? Yes, sir. Could you approach the lectern, give us your name and address, and your comments, please? 
Thank you. Russell Fay, 10 June Street. Uh, I'm directly behind Michael's post. Um, uh, Michael's passing should be a restart, a reboot, number one. It's moot. The applicant is no longer here. Number two, <clears throat> the accessory apartment <clears throat> shall be designed so the appearance of the building retains that of a single family residence. This does not. In addition, the original building is permitted to provide the addition does not increase the floor area of volume of the original building by more than 20%. It's way over that. Shall mean who created in 700 square feet. And this all comes about from a garage application with storage. This has been the plan all along. I, I don't know what to say. The rules, this is going to set a precedent, in my opinion. So as the chair, I'd like to just address the last part of that before I give it to um, the board or whoever. Um, there is no such thing as a precedent in terms of the zoning applications. Each one is handled individually. Um, we've had a, a wide range since I've been on the board and long before me of people that come in and individually request things, and each one is weighed individually. There is no precedent as far as if they get one, everybody else gets to have one, because every zoning situation is different. So as far as alleviating that concern, I hope that does take care of that concern for you. Um, and then I think I would probably yield back to the um, applicant because we and, and we'll see what he has to say about the other part of it. So if we can go on then, I, I, uh, a butter had made a mention of the original applicant no longer being here. And um, Mr. Moody had addressed this earlier today for our um, documentation purposes. And this gentleman is, is actually on the deed to the property. So I just want to be clear about that as well. So I think just for the record then, um, before I allow him to continue to speak, um, is there a motion to amend the application to include this gentleman here, Mr. I'm sorry, can you say your name for me, please, sir? It's Adam Chumsey. Adam Chumsey. Um, given the circumstances and, and put his name as a co-applicant or primary applicant at this point, I'm not really sure how it would be done, but. <clears throat> Through the chair, we just need a vote by the board to amend the application to change the applicant's name, seeing that Mr. Chumsey this is deceased. His son is also listed as a property owner and can can legally apply for the special permit. So um, again, do I, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion um, to allow um, Mr. Adam Chumsey under the circumstances to be a co-applicant um, on, the, on the application before. Okay, um, so we have a, a motion from Vice Chair Marin. Do we have a second? Thank you very much. We have a second from Mr. Ciccolo. So I have to do a roll call vote. Um, so Mr. Marin, how do you vote? I approve. Mr. Cussey, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Ciccolo, how do you vote? And I vote to approve. So um, again, so if you could just go ahead over and talk about now that we've officially put you on the application uh, as you want to address through the chair um, the, your butter's concerns. Well, I understand that he's concerned about the uh, what our original plan was or anything like that, but we're not here today to talk about the size because that's already been done. We're talking about what's going on the inside. You know, that's mainly in when you send out 47 abutters and you have one person coming forward, I think there should be a few more than one if there's any discrepancy, you know. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead then... Um do we have any other butters that would like to speak before I give it over to the board and then we'll allow the butter to retort that already spoke? Hearing none, seeing none? Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor, I yield the floor to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you would allow it this evening, I know it's your typical protocol to go me first, um, but I had raised um, considerable points during the last hearing. And so I'd, I'd actually like to hear from my fellow board members before Absolutely. I weigh into the changes that have been made, if you would allow it. If Absolutely. They would, if they wouldn't mind. Mr. Cussie. Yeah. Um, I mean, this has been brought down from uh, over 1,100 square feet down to 774. Um, so as we can see, there's a big storage area. That's so rooms have been shrunk down. Storage area is there. Obviously, we would be concerned that that stays storage. Um, you know, 
would have to trust that you would do that. And uh, other than that, um, I'm okay. I mean, it's, I can live with it. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Mr. Cole, to you, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question um, for uh, Caleb. The original permit, did that specify just a garage? Original. Through the chair, the original permit was to construct a, gr a garage with uh, cold storage above. So there was no building permit issued for this? Not for an accessory apartment. It hasn't been constructed yet. That's what I'm uh, ultimately driving at. There was a building permit issued for a garage. For a garage with storage above. With storage above, not for an accessory apartment. Correct. So no permit at any time has been requested or issued for an accessory apartment. Now, the only permits I'm aware of is there was a plumbing permit for the underground plumbing to the garage and then a building permit for the garage. Excuse me. That underground plumbing has been inspected? That's correct. And to what extent is that underground plumbing right? It's just capped at the floor level, to my knowledge. Capped at the floor level. No, <clears throat> excuse me, no uh, finished plumbing. Not that I'm aware of, no. I have another question. Should, <clears throat> should, the, should the applicant receive a yes and go forward with and then this storage area become some sort of living quarters. Um, it's a, I believe in the last one, it was an area for living, but now it's titled storage. Does this board have any recourse? I would say there's no board that has any recourse over what anybody does in a one or two family home. Sorry, I, I, I would say there's no board that has any recourse over what you do in a one or two family home. Just if you did something in your own home, no board could go in and tell you. It. If, if this area, can this area be rented? The bylaw states that the owner of the property needs to live in one of the two dwelling units, either the primary or the accessory apartment. No. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. From the applicant, who intends to live here? My sister. Now that through unfortunate circumstances, um, the area previously occupied in the house, she will not live there. Uh, temporarily, because actually she sold her house. Because no matter what she was going, she had to come to help my father. So she already had sold her house. So she's actually moving this weekend. She's moving in with me temporarily and until that's you, done. You live in the house now? Yes, I grew up there. Pardon? Yes, I grew up there. Me and my son live there. You live in a separate area of the house? No, I live well in the main area. In the main area of the house. The main area. Yep. It's a cave. Is there any other living quarters in the house? Nope. So this cannot be rented then? The bylaw states that either the accessory apartment can be rented or the house can be rented. The owner of the property has to live in one of the units. He, he, they have the ability to rent the other per the bylaw. Does the town have any recourse if in the future this becomes a rental unit? It could, be, it could be a rental unit as soon as it's finished. The bylaw says that it can be a rental unit. Can be. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. You, Vice Chair? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I would um, just extend, um, as we've heard of your father's passing, um, our sincere condolences to what your family's navigated. Um, and having him here last hearing and explaining what he wanted to do and not having him here, um, just want to extend that courtesy to you and your family and what you must be navigating. The challenge for me, um, succinctly, is, well, let me ask this first. Um, so the storage space where you've reduced a significant amount of square footage, is that gonna be a heated space? No. So you're not gonna heat that portion of it, <clears throat> but right across the apartment, you're gonna heat the bathroom. Correct, I was only gonna install a mini split with a heat pump. So, so you're gonna heat there, but you're not gonna heat the storage area. Right. So, for consideration, Mr. Chairman, and, and I would remind the applicant that we need a super majority this evening, so I want to extend every courtesy. Mm -hmm. But for me, this is an enclosed apartment with a defined footprint. And this storage area, um, to me, is like an oversized closet. And so I understand what he's trying to accomplish, um, but I'm challenged with that. We're not close. We're not close to the 700, uh, but the 74 doesn't bother me as much as that storage space is, this is a creative redesign. Um, and I'm challenged by that. Um, and the fact that, that this can be easily rented, um, I'll just say that um, it's, it's hard for me to understand how this would not be a heated space, how that would not be easily converted to a living space and this wouldn't be a thousand square foot apartment. Again, <clears throat> I don't disagree with you. However, I don't think we have the authority to project. I think we have to look at it at face value. At the beginning of the first meeting, we, they presented us with a substantially larger plan. The board response was come back with a smaller plan. <clears throat> a, a redesign was done and, and the, the applicant came back with a smaller plan that's very close to being compliance with the board. And again, I, I've said this from the beginning, there's nothing from stopping him from breaking down those walls. That's why I have, always stated that the 700 square foot requirement, in my opinion, doesn't always fit every place. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's not his fault that this is what the board requires. He's met the requirements of the special permit that we've asked him to do. And you've got to look at it at face value. We, we can't project what he's going to do down the road. We could, however, as part of a special permit granting, um, you could put a condition that it has to be immediate family and if they agree to it, they agree to it. You can condition it. We have the ability to do that as a board, but to, to correct afterwards, we don't at all. Agree. No, I appreciate your so, comments, Mr. Chairman. That's just where I stand on. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your comments. I mean, I, I, think, um, I think I just land on definitions differently where this is, um, this is a reshuffle, but not a redesign. Mm -hmm. um, and we, haven't, we haven't reduced the square footage in my view. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh. but, I, but I do, I don't discredit what he's trying to accomplish. I just think that he's caught in a space where um, he's got a footprint that's large and what our, what, much larger than what our bylaw allows. Mm -hmm. uh, but but thank you. I, I appreciate and your comments. I, I just want to open. I, I want the folks that are here to understand and how we look through these processes. You know, using the bylaw as a guide and determining what is right, and what isn't. But you can't expect a gentleman to go through the hardship of removing some of the roof and putting a flat area on before he can. You know what I mean? That would, that's the only way you'll guarantee be, it, that yeah, it was, and that's And that was my challenge you know last I mean? meeting. It would be nonsensical. Without he's, making him he's backed yeah. into He's backed into a scenario where he has a certain footprint. Right. But that footprint doesn't comply with our bylaw. Mm -hmm. This um, new footprint, the, the deduction for a stay away that is <clears throat> inside, that has to be added back in. This is over 800 square feet. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about just, seven a, te to just as a technicality. And again, we granted more than 100 square foot of, of leniency in, in the past, way more than 100 square feet of leniency. I, I, I agree <laughs> with you. I just want so, it for the, the sake of accuracy. Absolutely, and I do appreciate that. So, I mean, you can recalculate any way you want. I, and I have, we've done that in the past. I agree with you. And you can certainly do that and then decide if that's what the square footage is permitted. Um, I mean, but again, I think it fits within the, the concrete. It has the setbacks. It has, if the construction is there, it's not going to change the outside of the building. Sorry. Not I, very I, thoughtful, Mr. Chairman. You're absolutely right. So anyway, I'm going to go back one more 
time, please. If we have an abutter that would like to continue, you want to come back up and certainly voice yourself, sir, and you can talk to the board. Russell Fay, 10 June Street. I understand the box is already built. It was built two years ago. And I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to thread a needle. I understand that. And no matter what you vote, uh, as long as the deck, I didn't see anything about the deck in the back, and that's 14 feet in the air over my back fence. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to become another living area. You know, if it's just a, a landing for, for stairs is one thing. If you guys are going to do what you're going to do. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Vice Chair, did you want to address the um, abutter by any chance? Are you, are you expressing some concerns about... Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. I mean, I didn't. I didn't see um, from the deck's perspective. I I thought that we were looking at a design that the deck was just inclusive of an egress um, for the stairway, mm -hmm. and not. Um, and so, frankly, I wasn't considering any deck space as far as the living area. Mm -hmm. um, but if I if I'm mis misrepresenting the deck space, then um, maybe we got to take a look at that as far as square footage. Okay. Um, and I was considering the deck as far as egress of you come up, it's tight to the building, you come up and you go in. But again, if you, you cannot consider a deck to be, it's not inside living space. Correct. Right. So, I mean. Yeah, no, correct. We would, we would certainly discount unless the deck was, so I thought where the genesis of your question was, was um, if in fact the applicant were to come back. Um, and try to build out a deck that was enclosed. Mm. Uh, it would require another permitting process. Right, right. Um, and so those those concerns would be addressed. But I wasn't I wasn't as it's defined now um, to to the abutter's question. I wasn't considering the the deck um, as part of the living space and as mm -hmm. part of the square footage at all. So um, if I could have the applicant come back up to the lectern for a minute, um, in light of that new information. You, with the abutter having the concern about the 14 foot tall deck hearing over his property, if you will. Um, can you it's enlighten the board feet. a little bit on the dimensions of the deck and what its purpose it, will be? It was only going to be like a 10 by 10 deck and just come out and go to the backyard. That was it. So is it going to be more of like a place where I can see a 10 by 10 is basically coming out, taking yep. a turn, whichever direction you might be able to down there. Put a flower pot in a Landing. little circle chair with two chairs around it. That's about it. And, and it's 10 by 10, and that's the size of the deck that will be. Yep. I just want to make sure everybody understood that as well. Mr. Chairman, if I may, is that baked into your um, your current, the deck planning, is that baked into your current permit? Um, there is a, on the original print, I know it's on there. It shows it. Thank you, and sir. So it's probably on the original plan, but because he went and just did the, the internals for adjustment. Sure. Um, if I may, Caleb, is, is the deck permitted currently, and will it have to be if it's not? I don't, I don't know that the current permit um, includes the deck, but the deck would have to be part of the building permit, and it would have to meet setbacks despite how high in the air it is as long as it met the zoning setbacks, and it would okay. be allowed. Understood. But, but um, recognizing that, that even, even if we were looking at a 10 by 10 deck, I was looking at the scape of it here and look and thinking that it was literally just an upstairs and a turn. But if it does include a 10 by 10 pad, um, that wouldn't be included in living space in no. the apartment. No. It, so it still would be a moot point based on living space for the apartment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, do the butter, sir, do you want to come back up? Have we satisfied your questions or the concerns? Okay. Um, so we, we don't have any other butters here ready to speak or everybody else interested in this conversation right now, right, this hearing? Okay. So I'm going to make a motion or I'm going to ask for a motion, excuse me, if we can close the portion of the public hearing. Through the chair, before we close, I just want to remind the applicant that he would need all four members to vote right in the affirmative tonight. So are you... He has the right to request a continuance. Right. And before you, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. No, it's okay. okay. But Mr. Cussey had a point to raise, so before you would... Open that up. Yeah, I want to make I apologize. Sure. Yes, please. I yield the floor to you, sir. All right. My question would be, uh, so if we had a basement with 1,200 square feet, uh, if someone came in with a 700 square foot apartment that they wanted to put in there, I mean, they could have all the rest of it open space. Uh, you know what I mean? I just... Mm -hmm. 
Right, it's just I mean, relative to where it is in the location. Right, the I mean, so the space is there. And um, it's an interesting argument, Ms. Cussie, because it, because it would just be considered non, non-finished space. You, I would assume that if someone was making a 700-foot basement, a 700 square foot basement and an apartment, a basement. in a basement, thank you, um, that what they would do is they would finish 700 square feet and they would leave the, the rest of the portion of the basement, whether or not they chose to heat it, they would leave the rest of the basement unfinished. Right. So it's no, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting point. I mean, they're just the space is there is what I'm trying to. Um, As a basement point. space would be defined. Correct. It's mm-hmm. a fair. It's a fair. Yeah, it's a fair comparison. Just a, Thank you, sir. Feeling. And sorry to hear about your dad. I, um, yeah, that's a horrible thing. It was good to see him. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's my. Uh, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. uh, we're going to run into these situations where. Uh, but it's. I would I would concede it, it is it's an absolute fair argument um, where you've got you talk about defined space so this has been built a okay. basement is a defined plot right. um, so if you choose not to develop you know 350 square feet of a basement side and call the rest of it an apartment um, then it was truly defined space mm-hmm. that was uh, that was storage and you would and I, w- I would argue that less than I would a defined apartment so I think it's a fair argument. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for allowing us. Okay. So um, I think we've we've sought the clarification that we need. So is there a motion to close the public portion of the hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public portion of the hearing with the caveat that were you going to ask the um, the applicant just to contemplate the supermajority? Um, uh, yes, actually. So you understood at the beginning of the meeting that um, a supermajority requires that all four of us have the vote in the affirmative. If you have the alternates here... Uh, oh, excuse me. If we had Ms. Roche and we had a full, you know, complement of board members, then it, you could have a four to one, right? So you'd you'd have somebody as a buffer. But if if anybody votes here now and says no, um, you don't have the ability to reapply for this for two years, correct? Two years. I'll do a continuance. So you want to do the continuance? Yep. Okay. So before we um, go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing, the applicant has requested a continuance. Mr. Chairman, I'll uh, retract my previous motion uh, to close the public portion of the hearing, um, and I'll hereby accept the uh, the applicant's request for a continuance. Excellent. So we have a motion to accept the applicant's request for continuance. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Cussie. So we have a motion for the applicant to continue to the next hearing. And we have a second from Mr. Cussie, so I have to go around and do a roll call vote. Vice Chair Marin, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Cussie, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Chicolo, how do you vote? Approve. I vote to approve. Okay. So the six o'clock hearing will remain open. If any of butters or, or concerned residents have any questions or comments, you could actually go right ahead and speak to the uh, Department of Inspectional Services. Otherwise, we will see you at the next scheduled meeting, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks, just give them a minute. We'll let them clear out, and we'll try to get right to the next couple of hearings. I apologize. Sometimes these get a little uh, a little complicated, like a layer of the onion thing. Okay, um, so we have a 6.05 p.m. applicant, Alexandris Semis, and I hope I said that name correctly, and if I didn't, I apologize, requesting a special permit under 3912 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for a home occupation Located at 196 Prospect Street, map 72, parcel 58, is the applicant present. Sir, if you approach the lectern um, and give us an overview of what you're trying to accomplish, please. Hello, everybody. Sorry for my English uh, language barrier. (laughs) Uh, My name is Alexandros Semis. I'm from uh, 196 Prospect Street. I'm asking uh, Town of Auburn uh, for a special permit for open office for my new company. It will be uh, related to vehicle purchase and resell it online. So that's why I'm here and that's why I submitted it. Okay. Uh, do we have any of Butters here interested in the 605? Okay. Um, so before I turn it over, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you have your opportunity to speak. Oh, wait. So... Um, before we even begin with that, do I have a motion to open the hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Marin? Mr. Cussie? Approve. 
Mr. Colo? Approve. Myself? I approve. Okay, so the meeting is open. You've heard the application. Um, Through the chair? Yes, sir. Just like to inform the applicant of the four votes required okay. tonight. So, um, is it, how do you say your last name, sir? Semis. Semis. Okay, so Mr. Semis, um, so do you understand if we vote tonight, all four of us have to say yes. If one person says no, you can't come back for two years. Yes, I understand that. Okay, so do you want to continue with the hearing or do you want to wait until the next meeting? No, I want to continue this hearing. Okay, thank you. So uh, the applicant is aware of that and understands. So with that being said, we have a couple of butters that will appear to at least have some questions or concerns. I'm going to have them approach the lectern. Good. Okay, um, whoever would like to speak first, if you just go to the lectern, introduce yourself, give us your name and your address, and uh, <coughs> we'll hear your concerns. Um, Joyce Christensen Byland at 199 Prospect Street, so right across the street. Um, on the DBA questionnaire on number five, the question was, will you be storing things other than a computer inside or outside of the property? Will you be storing um, cars? I, I think some of the neighbors are concerned that since you'll be buying and selling cars, that you'll be storing cars on your property or car parts or anything like that. So he has to answer to the chair, ma'am. So if, oh. when you're finished, he, he can sit down, he can come back up and talk to us and explain what he wants to do and, and how it responds to you. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and approach the lectern, please, sir? And you got to speak into the microphone for me? So the concern is if you're going to have any cars on your property, are you going to store any cars after you purchase them on your property? Uh, thank you for the question. So um, the idea, not the idea, the process is when you purchase the car online, car remains staying, uh, staying in the, the auction lot until I get uh, documentation for that vehicle. If vehicle will be not driven or damaged or something, it will be um, transfer, uh, transported by specific vehicle to the place where it will be uh, fixed, not to my property. And as I uh, wrote down on application, most of cars I will send overseas for export. So I will buy from the auction, car will stay on the auction lot. I am paying uh, for each day, how many days it, it will stay. It could stay two months mm -hmm. until I get uh, title and paperwork. And only when I get paperwork, I will able to ship that car overseas. So I technically, I don't have to bring car to my lot. And uh, fixing the car at my house, I, I don't wish to fix in cars at my residential area. And that car will um, uh, be sent directly from auction out to auction um, parking lot area uh, to the container and overseas. Uh, second thing is if I will decide uh, if I will uh, buy a regular run and drive car, as example, for myself. I can buy for. I can buy and sell for myself vehicle, right? So yes, that car will be delivered to my own address. And on my address, I, as I um, read correctly, I have six vehicle parking spaces on my lawn, on my land. So I want to guarantee that it will not gonna be more than uh, approved uh, vehicle spaces on my lawn. It is first thing. Second. Now I'm owing, I owe three vehicles and they are on my uh, lot and I'm using all of them. So as example, if I will sell my three cars and I will buy three cars, I, I understand that I able to store them on my, my lot. So it will not gonna I, I, want just, I just want you to understand, I don't open retail store. Nobody will just coming from outside, from uh, outside people to my land, knock to the door and, oh, I, will, I want to buy this, this, this. There will no, you know how people 
put cars behind the lot and list like it is for sale. No, I will not gonna park on my land vehicles with labels as a dealer does that that vehicle is for sale. No, because I have only approved parking space. I two I have two cars garage, and those vehicles if they will be. Uh, as inventory part on my yard, it will be temporary because I also have an agreement with uh, another dealer where I will provide, I will forward that car for sale here at Massachusetts. So technically, if I will have some inventory as a car or vehicle on my lot, it will not gonna uh, increase the uh, number of six vehicles maximum and also I have opportunity to bring my inventory to the dealer and I'm paying for rent space for the dealer where I will uh, park those cars and um, put them for, for sale as a other dealer and they will sell uh, as a retail not me not on that address also I, w I want to like to Maybe it will make less questions. For next year, I'm, pl I'm planning, I'm still looking um, commercial property to buy, to own, for opening uh, the dealer. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking to buy a commercial property right now. So before that, I don't wanna stop the process opening the company. So this is the, like a very first step to get a business um, certificate, to get some licenses, to get um, confirmations with vendors. So technically I will not gonna do and storage uh, those like much cars. It will be like one or two, like to be honest. Okay. Yeah, and also I'm, um, I will not gonna work as a full time. I will work maybe one hour a day so that's what I want to uh, explain. I will not going to increase inventory, put park here everywhere, and uh, I don't want that. I, I do have my wife. She's very picky about that. <laughs> so this is a residential address, and I com completely agree with the uh, abutters. Um, do we have any other abutters that would like to speak and address your concerns? And then we're going to address them all at once. So. All right, so if you want to have a seat, we're going to have the other butter come up. If you could just give us your name and address, please, sir. Hi, John Costigian, 22 Old Meeting House Road. I'm right around the corner from um, the prospect address. My wife and I are here uh, to strongly protest this. We flipped the coin outside, and unfortunately, I lost, so I got to talk. But basically, we've been teachers... Um, we're retired teachers. We've lived in Auburn over 40 years. Our biggest asset is our home. And we are concerned about anything that would bring the value of our home down. Uh, as someone who walks Prospect Street every single day, I see cars from Herb Chambers that people to test driving, pe mechanics will bring up Appleton, down Prospect, over Meeting House Road, and then back to Herb Chambers. I know we can't do anything about that, okay? But this sure sounds to me like a car dealership. It's a residential neighborhood, and again, we are strongly against it. Thank you for your time. Sure. Okay, are there any other abutters that would like to speak on this? Yes, ma'am, I see someone in the back. I can't really tell, but... If you'd like to come up, please introduce yourself and um, give us your concerns. It's very difficult to see all I can see is your hand in the back there, so. My name is Nancy Degon. I live at 177 Prospect Street, which is right across the street from my new neighborhood. Could you speak into the microphone, please, ma'am? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, my name is Nancy Degon. I live at 177 Prospect Street. I am right across the street from my new neighbor here. I appreciate the fact that he has um, decided to live in Prospect Street. Prospect Street has become a major thoroughfare over the past few years since they added, um, you can actually enter it from Oxford 
and miss about four or five traffic lights to get all the way down to the end of Prospect Street. So there is quite a bit of um, traffic up there as it is already. Um, the school children wait for the buses in the streets. There are no sidewalks, okay? They all come from the abutting streets and they meet on the sidewalks. Um, having more cars coming up, even to look at the cars that he might be selling to them, or I, I'm not sure if he's gonna just export them all to a different country. Um, I'm just concerned about the traffic that it's gonna apply to my street and to the danger to the children if necessary. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so hearing none, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the members of the board. Um, Vice Chair Marin, to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so to the applicant, sir, if you could return to the lectern, please. So thanks for your explanation of what you're doing. Um, and you shared a lot of information um, and I appreciate your ambition and, and I wish you well. <clears throat> uh, but my concern is that, um, and my question is, so you had confirmed, I did take a look at your property um, and so you have space for six additional cars, correct? That's what I uh, read while buying the house. Okay, very good. Two, and a, and two years ago. Okay. Um, and, and I promise you, I'm not looking to trip you up or ask any trick questions, I promise. So I, I don't worry, I may look at it. Very good. So um, a couple of different business models that you would describe. So one, um, is all touchless and online, sending cars over, purchasing, having them in a hold area, and then sending them overseas. And then a second model, selling them locally, um, whereby for a short period of time, you would have them come to the house, correct? Um, and would they be driven to the house, the cars that you would store at the house for sale, or would they be, would they be delivered on a flatbed? Uh, they will be delivered on flatbed. Okay, very good. All right, thank you, sir. I don't have any questions, I have the questions at this time. I can update if okay. you... If so, you yeah, all, all vehicles which are um, selling online, they all don't have a license plate, so they cannot be driven, just driven without license plate. So technically, uh, the dealer or repair shop uh, who has a license plate they, they, they can drive, drive that car to my uh, property and same way to, to move that car from. But as I told you, I don't, I'm interested to open the dealer in commercial place and it will be the better opportunity for me to grow up. So at that point, I'm requesting only for office and no retail store, no, um, there will be no people who will be coming to my address to take a look, to take a road test of the vehicle, because I don't really agree with that too. So okay. as, as I, long I understand as, that. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand that. that you're not looking to open a commercial shop where folks are going to come and look and test drive and that sort of thing. Yes. But what I want to make clear is, is that you do intend from time to time to store cars on your property Yes. that are to be sold, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, no, that, I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna reserve um, any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Yeah. Cussie, sir? Yeah, if you wanna go back up, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sir, Mr. Cussie has some questions for you. I'm sorry, I, did I tell him that he could sit down? Nope, no. that's okay. Oh, good. We'll, yes. we'll work it out, we always do. So I see that you wanna sell parts online. Uh, yes, and, and I'm doing that. Okay, so are these parts going to be delivered to your house through UPS and, uh, you know, Amazon? And yes, so um, uh, how to explain the amount? It's easy to explain the amount. Uh, I'm, I, every day I'm buying something for, for my house, something for myself, something for my wife, something for my kids. So something will be bought for that vehicle and it actually will not going to be a parts it will be like we can think that it is a material for that vehicle so uh, because it is not a commercial area and it is not a commercial place and uh, it will not 
the uh, vendor will not gonna send the freight to residential address. This is the law that this is how they work. So I can actually buy only small amounts, small boxes, like one piece here, one piece there. So it is actually the same what you're buying for yourself. It will not gonna increase the traffic. Another thing I also wrote down that I will sell parts online. I will not gonna sell the like thousands of things at once that has to be like pick it up with a forklift and place it somewhere. It's also requires the commercial address. So what I am selling right now, it is small handy boxes, but actually, as I told you, I am already selling them online and nobody sees that because I bring in that box directly to the post office and drop it there. We do, we do have a lot of drop-off places, so it fits everywhere. So it's not a big deal to ship it out. So you're not just you're not just buying parts for the cars that you own. You're going to buy parts and resell them. Um, yes. Yeah. So there could be a lot of UPS and Amazon. I know you say you buy things for your family. We all do, but yeah. So what I want to say. Parts you're going to buy. I, mean, I understand. Very I understand the question. Thank you. So what I want to say, it is not a commercial address. I want to confirm. I will not ship to my address big freights, what has to be like forklift to take it off and something. It is not acceptable for me and I don't ask him for that. Mm -hmm. And same thing with selling parts or it doesn't matter. It's part or flower or Apple, doesn't matter, computer, it is a handy box which can be a drop it off anywhere in a FedEx My UPS. My concern is if, you, if you're doing 20 or 30, 40 parts a day, you know what I'm saying? It, it could, how many parts are you going to do? It's, it anyway? could be a huge increase in traffic with the uh, UPS and Amazon, like I said, if you're doing 100 parts a day. You know what I mean? I'm, that, Technically, my concern. idea is to not to, to buy and, and store them at home. So if I will buy something, technically I buying for somebody. So at that point I can buy and write down the delivery address already for resale. There is a lot of online stores who does like that. They have a vendor, They when they got a, a buyer, they will just be like between buyer and vendor and just resell that part without even ship it to his address. Like from um, warehouse to directly to the purchaser. So if I may, I think what he's describing really is what he's calling himself as a third party vendor. So it's like a reseller, you know, so you get uh, a company that, you know, you promise to advertise and you get so much of them. And if you can sell 10 alternators, then they give you a little bit of a discount on it. Like, and they just drop ship right to other people's houses. It's, so it's really kind of what he's describing. Not so I think, not, I don't right. think, I'm not suggesting that he isn't going to have things delivered yeah. to his house, but I think what he's trying to describe is like, a, it's a third party reseller, pretty much. Um, yeah, because it's a, it, you know, just the fact that, you know, the UPS and the uh, Amazons can be like. Right, oh yeah. No, I totally get that, but I just wanted to be clear, like I think part of his explanation is some stuff's coming to the house, some stuff's gonna be purchased online, from someone who is just going to get a ship from a warehouse. And eventually you want to move this whole business off site. Yeah, that's my point to move there because right now today I can't afford to buy a property, to buy much, a lot of inventory, to hire people. I can't afford it right now. So I want to make a story playing like a song playing. And after I will increase that with amount and uh, I will need more help. So at that point, I am a song uh, proprietor, so I will start that song myself. And if that will work perfect, we have a goal for next year to buy a property and increase the inventory. I'm very concerned about the neighbors. Uh, the traffic is has increased up there. This is a very nice place. We very love that place area, and we also appreciate kids because this was a reason purchase the house exactly at that area because there is a lot of uh, growing families with a lot of kids. So we appreciate that. 
been good for now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ciccolo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is it your intent to go before the selectmen and request a dealer's license? Definitely, I will request a dealer license when I buy a commercial property. But not today, not this year, not at that time when I'm working from uh, my residential address. I did not. Okay. If, I did. if I may. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for my English. Sure. It could oh, be okay. complicated. No, not at all. For, it might be the microphone volume. Um, so the applicant had, had shared that it is absolutely his intent to go for a dealer's license before the select board, but not at this time. Um, and I think that um, he articulated that the plan would be not until he was at a stage where he could purchase a large property and open up a dealership, he would go and get that license. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah, thanks. That's all I have for right now, thank you. Okay. Um, I really don't have anything that hasn't been sort of answered yet, I think, from the board anyway. Um, but I have a couple questions for, for Mr. Moody, if I could, please. Um, has this been vetted by the DCG? Have we gotten to that point yet with this? No, the, the D, through the chair, the DCG would not look at home occupations generally. They won't look at home occupations with um, car lots type stuff? Generally, the DCG would not review home occupation applications. Right. And the reason I asked this question is because I myself, many, many years ago, before the internet was a big deal, went and asked for a car license uh, and was refused at the DCG um, for basically trying to do the same thing that this gentleman was trying to do now. And I am not complaining. That's not what I'm saying. But I was sent to the DCG. They reviewed my application, and they basically said it wasn't suitable to move forward. I, I, can't, I am not complaining about that. I'm just thinking that it, I can't it speak for others on the DCG, but I would not support this application for a car dealership in a residential area. Right, absolutely. I just can't didn't speak know for anyone else that before because I know in the past it has. the applicant did not apply to DCG. No. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. And if I am looking at the map and parcel here, can you just explain those to me right there? Is that right? Right, so this is his property. Is it showing right? No. Then why we haven't, what is that? That's, that's the area of the bothers. Right, okay. So that's what I want. There's right. One house here. Yeah. Right, and that's all the way over there. Right, okay. This is the yellow. Right. Okay, no, I understand that. The pink is all about it. Right, okay. This is one large property. And right, right. That's probably 15. Okay, that's what I want. No, that's exactly what I was asking. Okay, I want to make sure I understood that clearly. Mr. Chairman, okay. just for, because I have to indulge. Of course. Um, could, could you just um, kind of elaborate on the question that you were asking? I did. So if you look at the um, the uh, map here, 196 Prospect Street, Auburn, Mass, map 72, parcel 58. So I don't know if, you, is it possible for you to pull that up on the screen so I can show everybody what we're talking about here quickly? All right, so folks, what I was talking about here, as you can see, that little yellow speck in the middle there is the applicant's property. You are all the abutters around there, as you can see, and then they consider that with the abutters across the street because that is a substantially large piece of property right there. Um, and as far as the board's concerned, I was looking at it and just wanted to make sure I understood exactly what we were looking at, where we were looking at on the map. Um, and as far as, you know, the, the, uh, the density of the uh, residential area is what I was trying to Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, that was the only two concerns that I really had. Uh, and, and otherwise, um, I'll give it back to you, Vice Chair, so you can wrap up. Thank you, sir. I, I don't have any um, additional questions for the applicant. Thank you, sir, for your responses. Um, and um, I do appreciate the abutters being here and participating in the process to make sure that they're certainly heard. Uh, but I don't have any specific questions to the uh, 
okay. to the applicant. I would be I would be willing to uh, close the public portion of the hearing, but I defer to my board members if they're ready. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cussie. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, just the same old uh, traffic concerns. Uh, I would hate to see this grow into something that uh, adds a lot of traffic to the neighborhood. Um, it would be nice if you could wait a year and purchase a piece of commercial property. And, and so uh, I just want to do an uh, update. As I, to as, you, as I told you before, I'm working as, uh, I'm already working full time in other dealership in the Westboro. I will not gonna uh, left my job, so I continue working. I will continue working there. So I will not able physically to buy a lot of cars, to buy a lot of parts and to sell them from my own property. So it will not gonna be so big amount and I, and I want to warranty you that it will not gonna cause a traffic at all. By the end of the, uh, by the, in the middle of the street, we have another uh, three new uh, houses building. So same thing I can, as uh, owner, complain about that traffic, what they are using, making, but I'm not. And um, I just wanna say that I will not gonna increase the traffic as it is right now, so. have concerns that it would grow into something bigger than I would like to see so those are my concerns I'm good for okay thank, thank you. you Mr. Ciccolo any last comments before we close I'm good thank you very much okay so um as the vice chair mentioned to uh if there is no other questions or comments do we have a motion to close the public portion of the hearing Mr. Chairman I'll make a motion to close the public portion of the hearing do I have a second second thank you very much vice chair Marin how do you I, vote I approve Mr. Cussie how do you vote approve Mr. Ciccolo how do you vote approve and I vote to approve. So public portion of the hearing is closed. No more public comments. It's just going to be the board discussing and discerning which way they want to go. Um, so I yield the floor to you, Vice Chair Marin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, um, I promised a few that I would be brief this evening. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But, uh, but uh, just a few opening comments, and I do appreciate um, the gentleman's um, ambition. Um, but, um, you know, I'll just succinctly say, that um, I heard the abutters loud and clear. I think that their concerns are valid. Um, this is a residential neighborhood. A couple of the things that I picked up on specifically was that this was intended to be a part-time business. Um, and so with that part-time business, um, I did get a clear verification that there was an intent to put cars to be sold on the lot. Um, and that concerns me in a residential area. And I'll leave it for that. Um, I open it for other board members to make some general comments, but I'm ready to make a motion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kelsey, sir? I have no more comments, thank you. Mr. Ciccolo? No more. And I have no more questions, concerns, or comments as well. So do we have a motion on the 605 hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to deny. Do I have a second? What was the motion? The, uh, the Vice Chair made a motion to deny the application. I'll second that. All right, so we have a, a motion to deny and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Vice Chair Marin? Deny. Mr. Kelsey? Deny. Mr. Ciccolo? Deny. And I vote to deny. Sir, I apologize, but that's not just not work for us in the residential area. One of the um, sort of tenants that we go by here on the board is that we uh, encourage business in the business districts and we vigorously support them, but we have to maintain the integrity of the neighborhoods while we do that. And that's pretty important to us. So um, good luck with any future endeavors and I hope it works out for you, but um, we're gonna have to pass on this one. So thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, give us about two minutes to clear out and we will get to this next hearing. Um, do I have a motion to close the hearing? Uh, that hearing. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Um, okay, Vice Chair Marin? I, I approve. Mr. Cussie? Approve. Mr. Ciccolo? Approve. And I myself vote to approve that hearing is now closed. Okay, let's get to this next one. Will we get an easy one yet? <laughs> no fun in that, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Okay, so, where's my, here, I need to borrow yours for me. I'm, I'm, I'm shuffling all my paperwork here. All righty, so we have a, whew, 610 applicant, Rosemary LeBeau, requesting a special permit under 3.9.1.2 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for a home occupation other than retail sales, located at 218 West Street, map 45, 
pass out eight or a motion to open the hearing. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Vice Chair Marin? I approve. Mr. Cussey? Approve. Mr. Giacolo? Approve. And I vote to approve. The hearing is open. Um, is Ms. LeBeau present? Ma'am, if you could approach the lectern and um, give us an overview of what you're trying to do, and then we'll, you'll see how it goes. We'll talk to your butters and board members. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Rosemary LeBeau. I live at 218 West Street in Auburn. Um, I am an artist, and I have a, a studio there uh, that was built in 2003. And it's my intention, with your permission, to um, open a small portion of my studio to be a gallery for potential buyers to come in and see the work and uh, hopefully purchase it. Okay. Um, do we have any abutters that would like to speak on this hearing? Hearing none, seeing none. I'll go ahead and turn it over to the board. Vice Chair Marin, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here. Uh, I did take an opportunity to view your property. Um, it's a beautiful poem. Thank you. Um, just, uh, just one question, uh, if I may. Uh, so as, as far as the, just the volume or the traffic, um, would you expect that multiple um, potential customers would come by at one time? Well, I, I would have singular buyers, um, you know, but it would be by appointment only. I have space for one car to park um, that's going to be designated as a parking space. And um, no, I don't, I don't foresee that there's going to be any, any traffic issue. I've had many, you know, my husband and I both have big families. We have family reunions where we have sometimes 30 cars there and we've never had an issue, but I understand your concern. Yeah, um, certainly, so not a concern. And uh, just for some immediate feedback, I mean, when you had said by appointment only, yes. it was really the sweet spot for me. Uh, <laughs> but, um, okay. but not having um, a single um, artistic skill in, in my list, um, I have a great deal of respect for Thank what you, you create. Okay. So <laughs> I wish you. you well. I don't have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Cussie? Yeah, just thank you for coming forward and, uh, you know, in front of the board rather than just going forward and trying to do it without a permit, so. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Ciccolo? No questions. I have a couple questions. Yes. What type of art do you do? Oh, I do all kinds of art. I do a lot of art, and I'd like to invite you to come and see anytime. Uh, I, Are you I'm, primarily a painter or a sculptor? I'm not primarily anything. I make yeah. art out of everything. Good so I awesome. do. I do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Excellent. Thanks. So um, I have no other question concerns. I did see we have a caller two um, that has a little noise going on in the background there. Caller two, are you there? Hello? Hello, caller two. Oh, okay. All right, so that works. So I have no other questions or concerns or comments or anything like that. So, um, oh, is it through the chair? I would just ask if there's any abutters online that want to comment. Right, well, that's what I was kind of getting with caller two. Are there any abutters online that want to comment about the 610 hearing? Mr. Chairman, if I may, you, you may call them out rather than by caller two, perhaps by the initials. Hang on. If you can see any additional information. Right. Yeah, there's no initials or anything there. TA and ZA and C. That's us right here. Town Hall, Zoning Board, myself, and then caller two. Hello, caller two. Okay. Can the person on the phone for the meeting identify themselves? Hello? I think yes. they probably put their phone down comment. walking around while they were <laughs> listening to the meeting, it sounds like. Okay, so um, do we have a, any more questions or concerns of the applicant? I don't, Mr. Chairman. I and we have no abutters present and we have none online. Is there a motion to close the public portion of the Mr. hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to close the public portion of the hearing. Uh, Mr. Cussey, oh, excuse me, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Marin? I approve. Mr. Cussey? Approve. Mr. Ciccolo? Approve. And I approve. Is there a motion for the 610? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve with standard conditions. Uh, do I have a second? second? Thank you. Vice Chair Marin? I approve. Mr. Cussey? Approve. Mr. Ciccolo? Approve. And I vote to approve. Congratulations. Good Thank luck. Thank you very Caleb much. Caleb will be in touch or vice versa, actually. You can reach out to Caleb. Thanks for being here. And we'll Good let evening. this clear out. 
And we have one left. Okay, so um, just to be sure, so do I have a motion to close the 6 10 p.m. hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to close that 6 10 p.m. Second. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Marin. I approve. Mr. Cussie. Approve. Mr. Carlo. I vote to approve. So the 610 is clear. Um, so we have a 615 applicant, Mark W. Wagner, requested an aquifer special. One second while we clear the hallway out there, please, folks. Sorry. Outside. Okay. So uh, again, we have a 6.15 p.m. applicant, Mark W. Wagner, requesting an aquifer special permit under section 4.3.5.1 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for an automotive sales service and repair shop in an aquifer two zone, map 40, parcel 50. Do I have a motion to open the hearing? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Okay. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Marin. I approve. Uh, Mr. Ciccolo? Approve. Mr. Cussie? Approve. And I approve. This hearing is open. Um, is the applicant, oh, there you are. Sir, if you could um, introduce yourself, please. Give us an overview of what you'd like to accomplish. Great, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mark Wagner. I'm president of Wagner Motorsports International um, and also uh, Wagner car dealerships up in Shrewsbury, Mass. So appreciate your time tonight. Uh, basically what we are um, proposing here tonight is just to move our motorcycle division which includes Indian motorcycle KTM and BMW motorcycle from 700 Plantation Street Worcester out to Auburn at, at this location so that's that's what would, it would be a full service motorcycle dealership retail uh, service parts so and we're located down at the old Staples we're looking at the building where the old Staples uh, location was at 460 South Bridge Street Hey, um, do we have any abutters present that are concerned or interested in this hearing? Just want to make sure. And do we have any abutters online that are interested in this hearing? Caller two, are you with us yet? Okay, hearing none, seeing none. So we're going to go ahead and write to the members of the board. Vice Chair Marin, I yield to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. And um, thank you for the business and all that you conduct. The, um, uh, so the dealership that you're proposing, just to, to get the layout, um, my, my reference point is a little more or less dated than old staples. This is the old Halloween outlet. Correct, right? the annual okay. Halloween outlet. The annual, okay, very good. <laughs> Wanna go back, it was the old Chester Tuttle Post. Okay, so, <laughs> I remember way back. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right, I, you know what, I defer to, to the legacy information. I, <laughs> fair enough. Um, uh, so um, the um, uh, understand that there'll be sales on the property. Um, if I may, um, uh, Ms. Chairman, Caleb, this is clearly business district, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank HB. you. HB. Number okay. Route 12. Number All right. Route 12. Exactly. Right. All right. So just wanted for the record. Uh, so the um, um, sales, um, do you intend to do any um, light maintenance on vehicles at that property? Yes, we will have a full service department there. So we will go from uh, pre-delivery inspection all the way to oil changes, engine work. So we will have a full service department at this location. Okay. So, so Absolutely, which we planned and we've talked to the planning board. We've worked it through with the license. You know, we have a class one, class two and repair in process right now. So we are working towards that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay, so I'm recognizing that this application will need to go to site plan approval. The applicants already received site plan approval. Okay, very good. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm gonna reserve any additional questions and thank give other board much, members a chance to jump in. Thank you, sir. Okay, so just for the record, just for the folks at home, or if anybody actually does watch these, um, this is the floor plan on what will be being sold. We have a pre-owned section. We have an Indian motorcycle, a BMW motorcycle, and a KTM motorcycle um, section. Um, you know, it looks to me to four, probably 22 to 24 motorcycles on the showroom floor at any given time. And honestly, I've been in that area and I think 22 to 24 motorcycles would be, would be pretty tight anyway, to be quite honest with you. Uh, especially if you're gonna plan on having a parts and service area and all that other stuff. So what is the total square footage of this 
area. Um, 16. Yeah, six, 16 and change, 16, 3, 16, 4. Wow, okay, yeah, it's right. Than I, I mean, we operate right now out of around 12,000. So this is actually an increase for us in terms of space. And we're pretty excited about it. I mean, we're right near 290. Right. So, you know, we've got that influence there with the, you know, so, you know, we get that exposure. So, I've actually been to your dealer. Haven't purchased anything, just to be clear for the record, but I did see the Indian dealer and the BMW dealer up there. And it's obviously, it's a well-run operation, so. Um, but go ahead, I apologize. No, no, not at all. I was I was finishing, but if Mr. Kohler wouldn't mind, if, if I could just sneak in one final question. Um, the footprint of the building itself now, do you intend, um, just out of curiosity, to expand that footprint, or will you be working with the existing footprint of the building? I'm sorry, oh, yeah. Mr. Cussie. Oh, yes, if you could see yeah, the and then the, uh, the the bank is uh, 3,800. The ready med is like 58, and we're 16,000 okay. is for the retail for the motorcycles. Significantly larger. So no, so no expansion on the on the on just a defined footprint. Oh, okay. Okay. and I'm only asking you that again. I know you already answered it for the record, so that he would have it on microphone. Yes, that's correct. No, uh, we we literally can't move going even that far. <laughs> thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And I and I've helped, Ms. Thank you, sir. I've helped Mr. Chicolo, so I know further questions. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Okay, will you answer, uh, who is asking some questions next? Is it Mr. Cussi or Mr. Chicolo? Okay, Mr. Cussi, I yield the floor to you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so this is a aquifer zone two, correct? Yeah. And um, my only question here is that uh, it's a storage of toxic and hazardous materials. It's a, no. That would be my question. Are you going to be storing? So you're going to be storing oils and brake cleans and things like this? Yes, we will. Yes. Yeah. Right now we're a small quantities generator. So, and, and we have invested in the latest, you know, material handling. So, I mean, we are prepared for it. We've been in the automobile business 60 plus right. years. You know, we know what the investment is going to be needed. So we'll work with the plan, uh, the building inspector, everything on, in terms of that, to, you know, to have it the best equipment be possible. Certainly. Okay. That would be my... At most concern in the aquifer, just right. because it. Um, and, uh, it just for the record, there is an oil water separator that's being going to be installed. For the, there is going to be a floor drain in the mechanics area. So, in the rear of the property, the northern part of the property, there's going to be an oil water separator in there. It's going to connect you know, it to the sewer. I know we have the aqua field over there, and stuff, but I just I don't know what type of system they have in the ground compared to what we have here. Uh, so, you're going to. Upgrade is what you're saying? We're going to add, well, no, we're going to put one in. We're currently, there is no, not one. Yet. Currently, there is, so we will be improving the site in that respect. Through the chair, the, what the applicant's stating is they're going to put an oil water, they're going to put four drains in the building for the. It's a Zoom, right? Go to meeting. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Let's just see if we can find out who it is. Got it, Caleb. <laughs> okay. That's fine. So what the applicant's stating is they're going to be putting floor drains into the building, into the service area, which will go to an oil water separator, which will separate any any contaminants, and then it will discharge into the sewer system. So it'll be fully permitted and inspected. Um, zone 2, it says this, the manufacturer use or storage of toxic or hazardous materials is not allowed, but if you go further down, automotive sales, service, and repair shops, automotive body and paint shops are permitted yeah, with sure. a special permit. So the storage of hazardous chemicals, I don't think this would apply to that, that the quantities they're going to have on site wouldn't qualify. All right, I'm good for now, Paul. Thank you. Mr. Colo, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Has the Planning board reviewed we've, what you plan we've, to do we've been for in front of the drainage. Planning board last uh, last week, the tenth. Yes, and we've got uh, we had to have a site plan approval. We did get site plan approval last meeting. So you will go back to the planning board after no, we're, this? We're, no, we're done. The planning board has already approved the application. They they granted the site plan approval and have so that they have gone and given their okay as far as drainage and all of that. Everything's existing on site. The only the only additions to the drainage would be the four drains in the building going to the oil water separator. So they'll be improving the site. Thank you. 
That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So I have no questions of the applicant. Um, I'm familiar with the company. I'm familiar with the, I mean, the current stuff that they're selling here, BMW, Indian, and KTM, that's 100% new, right? So trade-ins are going to be on the floor. Trade-ins, generally speaking, I mean, motorcycles, unless they're wrecked, they're usually well cared for, as you know, yeah. right? So, um, and honestly, if I was to put anything in that building, it would be a brand new dealership because they're going to be the most strict about how they handle all their materials. Where we have the other garages that have been down Route 12 in that same zone for 40 years, and we've never seen what's underneath those. That's how I see it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do, do have another question. Mm -hmm. As a customer, hypothetical situation. I come in, I'm a customer, I want to test drive one of these motorcycles. Just, just take it around the lot. That's all I'll do. What's your answer? The question is, to, in, in what yes, we do test drives uh, currently, and we would expect to do test drives here in August. In other words, I just want to take it around the parking lot. That, I think you'd ask if that's... Oh, can that, that would, be done? Um, is that acceptable or... Um, very rare, but I, I guess it could be uh, theoretical. Yes, yeah. Somebody through, would, through would the let chair. somebody yeah. test drive. Through the chair, can I elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, of course. The person have to have a motorcycle license for the state of Massachusetts to do a test drive? Yes, yeah, we yeah, yes. we check everyone. I mean, okay, say I have a motorcycle license. I just want to take a spin around the parking lot. I'm thinking about buying a new one. Uh, again, I, I think with the construction of our parking lot there, I, I you know, I, I'm not quite sure that would be a use, you know, a, um, give, suitable. give a suitable and or, you know, give a potential customer. It, through the chair, it, yeah. it'd just be like if you go on a test drive a car, you're, right. you're going to put a dealer plate on the, on the motorcycle and you're going to take it out on the road. You're not going to yeah, drive around. I don't agree lot. that it's the same as a car because you're out on the road. You're not in a parking lot well, where there that, are that other was, people. That was my around. point. You wouldn't test drive a motorcycle in a parking lot. But what is, so what is the answer? No. Test driving in the parking lot, I think the answer is yes, no. Right, right. All right. Bless Excuse you. me. You. Thank you. Safety concerns. Huh? Safety concerns. Yes. Yeah. Any other concerns about the issue with the no. traffic flow or anything like that? Okay. Uh, any other concerns? I'm no? good. Thank you. Um, my only suggestion, and again, I'm just, I can say it now or later, whatever. But I, you know, living right near that area and understanding what you're doing. Um, ideally, uh, you're going to have to come back to us for signage at some point, probably. So if you could keep in mind, uh, they're going to just have standard signage pretty much. Yeah, unless they were looking for waivers from the sign bylaw, okay. they would just so need building permits. My concern signage. is if we're having these test rides as we do it, we see with our other dealership of motorcycles on Route 20, is that when they're leaving, we, we really try to encourage right turn only at that point for test rides, especially inexperienced riders. Cutting across like that, uh, you know, you know how that is. A left-hand turnout of the parking lot can be a little sketchy. Um, so if you just keep that in mind for the traffic flow. And again, I'm 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 a motorcycle fan, and uh, I want it to be as safe as possible. Should the board vote in favor of it, so you know that's just my one concern. Um, so I don't think there's anything else, and there's no more butters. Do I have a motion to close the public portion of the hearing? Mr. Chair, Chairman, a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Vice Chair Marin. I approve. Mr. Cussie. Approve. Um, thank you, and I approve. So the, the public portion of the hearing is closed. Can I hear concerns or comments from the board? No comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, from me. I have no comments. I'm good. Okay. None. No comments. Okay. And I don't either. So uh, is there a motion for the, make sure I say this correctly. Is there a motion for the 615 PM applicant Mark Wagner requests an act for a special permit under section 4351 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for an automotive sales service and repair shop in Aquifer Zone 2, map 40, parcel 50. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve with standard conditions as stated. I will okay. second. And we have a second. All right, so Vice Chair Marin? I approve. Mr. Cussie? Approve. Mr. Colo? Approve. I vote to approve. Um, I'm sure you can be in contact with Caleb and the Department of Special Services and they'll work with you to proceed and move on to the next step. So good luck, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And Thanks for being here. I can tell you as the chair, I appreciate you coming to town and do business. 
Um, and I also love motorcycles, so I'm excited. So, please, a good luck. On by. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. Good evening. All right. So, we have um, a motion to close the 615 p.m. hearing. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, so Vice Chair Marin. I approve. Ms. Giacolo. Approve. Ms. Tussie. Approve. And I approve. So that's closed. So we do we have we have no new business. It doesn't appear as though we have any minutes of the meeting to take care of. So our next min, our next meeting is September 15th, 2022. We tentatively have the 6 p.m. applicant scheduled for that. Um, and otherwise, we have nothing else. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I will second. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Marin. I approve. Mr. Chicolo. Approve. Mr. Cussie. Approve. And I approve. Meeting adjourned.